Hello everybody, good morning and thank you for being intentional and for logging on to our embassy online service. Uh, we are going to engage in worship and then I'm going to come back and we are going to speak to you about our fast and uh, we're going to break the word of God to you. I love the song which says, I raise a hallelujah. I love it when she says, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar. So let's do that this morning. Let's just lift up our voices, lift up our hands and raise our hallelujah. You ready? Let's go. <laughs> a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah my way
Father, we just worship you this morning. We thank you, O God, for the gift of life. We thank you, O God, for the breath of life. And Lord, we use both this morning and raise our hallelujahs to you. You are the sovereign God and we worship you. We acknowledge your lordship over our lives. And this morning, O God, in the midst of all of the storms, we thank you that you are still at the elm of our boats. I thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, as you did to the to the storm and and in the situation with the disciples, you stood at the elm of that boat and you said peace be still this morning, I pray oh God that there will be a procurement of that peace into our lives, into our homes, into our nation and into the nations of the world. We are trusting you, O God, for a peace that goes beyond human understanding. We trust in you and you alone, for we have no other God besides you, O God. And I thank you, O God, that you are going to make ways in the desert. You're going to make rivers in the desert. And where there is no way, you will create a way. And we give you thanks. Now, Father, as we uh, sit at your feet, feed us through your word, encourage us. Let this week, oh God, be an encouragement. I thank you, oh God, as we have uh, brought ourselves to a fast and as we would come to the conclusion of it. Uh, I know, I have a confidence that every word that we have issued, oh God, every word that we have put out there will not be returned void, uh, but you will answer our prayers. We give you thanks in Jesus' name and everybody out there. They said, Amen, Amen. Well, God bless you. We've been through the fast and I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, there's one thing I want to just say, you know, uh, the greater we, we, we look to God and we increase the intensity of our prayer and the fast, I have learned that the attacks also become more intense. Man, I'm not sure why that is, but uh, uh, we know that if God is for us, nothing can be against us. And so this morning, I want to just talk about and trigger into the atmosphere this morning. I'm, I'm not going to be long, but I just want to trigger into your atmosphere uh, some of the things that God has placed. As I speak it, may it become a reality in your homes. One of the things I want to talk about today is the shield of favor the shield of favor all right now uh, there's an effect to our fast and James chapter 5 verse 16 says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much the effectual I want to just camp on that word and say that there must be visible effects to your prayer. God must give effect to your prayer. And so even as we are in our seventh day of the fast, uh, all of our prayers must be effectual. Because the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer for righteous man availeth much. So I want you this morning not to be empty in your trust levels, but to trust God for heavenly responses. Will you do that? Uh, don't just Pray and not expect. Have a full expectation that God is going to answer your prayer. All right. Now, if you've if you've not been intense or intentional, I want you to understand also there are benefits of coming under a corporate anointing. A corporate anointing. So we've all been trusting God and uh, the, the, the church has been standing in the gap for those that are in need, for those that are sick in body, for those that are maybe going through cabin fever. I tell you what, many people are going through cabin fever. What is cabin fever? Cabin fever is being isolated in a specific space. And uh, that's all you see or that's all you're allowed to work in and you feel isolated. You feel you can, you, can, you can also become very depressed and I pray that that's not going to be your, your case. Let, let me just say this to you. I was reading about cabin fever and they say one of the best ways to overcome it is to be in a natural environment. I agree with that to a degree. <laughs> because you know what, uh, I'm going to put a picture of my garden and there it comes. There you go. I love, uh, this is a new passion that I have to, to, to 
uh, just take on some walk in the garden. I tell you what, it's keeping my memory insane. <laughs> if that's 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 uh, a word, I'm I'm being sane in my membrane. Uh, so whenever I'm going through some stress. I just walk into that garden and I tell you what, the beautiful flowers, the bird bath. The other day I took a picture and perhaps I'll, I'll, I'll just show it to you as well. Took a picture of birds. Birds are coming in. It's keeping me sane in my membrane. And so that's just a, a something for you to consider. Go out into nature. Uh, just, just, just walk and, and the things that are, are great for us are free to us. Um, we've learned even through the chats with experience, uh, uh, breath is, is important, so is water. And so everything that God has made for us uh, is blessed us with it. Let's enjoy it inside of that space. All right. Now, I was talking about a corporate anointing. Uh, the, the, the church has been on this fast and we've been releasing the spirit of God. Even if you have not for some reason kept the fast, but you come under a corporate anointing. Uh, let me explain it like this. There is a lady that was sick for 12 long years. She was hemorrhaging. And you know, when Jesus was passing by, she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made well. She had a revelation and here it comes. She said, if I could just touch the thing that is touching him, I will be made well. She didn't even say that she wants to touch Jesus, but she wanted to touch something that was touching him. If your church is touching Jesus like we've been doing, and you can just touch and hook into the power of love through a corporate anointing, that blessing can flow into your life. It's important to be able to be connected to something or someone that's touching Jesus if it's impossible for you to touch him by yourself. Uh, so she said, if I could touch the thing that was touching him. Uh, Lazarus is uh, also a good example of having Mary and Martha, his sisters, connected to Jesus while he lay dead in his grave. Because of the connection of Mary and Martha who were able to touch and send for Jesus, Lazarus encountered a resurrection. I am not sure who I'm talking to this morning and maybe you are in a dead situation, but it's important if you uh, can just stay connected. People say, why are you connected to that church? Well, I'm connected to that church because that church is connected to that God. Okay, so this morning it's important to have, um, what's the word, God-centric people inside of your space. God-centric people. People who are calling on God at this time. People who are praying. People who are singing. People who are worshipping. That's the right environment and atmosphere. It will keep you sane in your membrane. All right? Now, one of the things that I have been focusing in prayer this, in this week is an hedge of protection. And I have been praying, oh God, that our family, our church, all those of God that are trusting you are going to have a hedge of protection. So, uh, this morning, we're going to pause and thank God for the hedges of protection around us. Do you know that uh, you have an edge of protection around you? Now, let me show you this in Job chapter 1 verse 10. Like I spoke about it last week, uh, the, the enemy is, or the devil is engaging in a dialogue with God. And uh, uh, the, the man that comes into focus is Job. And God says, did you try Job? Now, the devil says to God, hast thou not put or made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side. Thou was blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Now, 
What we need to see here is that the devil had already visited Job's household to attack him and realize that there is a hedge of protection. So God did not put the hedge of protection after the conversation with the devil, but the the, the hedge of protection was already around Job and the enemy already had visited Job and found that there is an hedge of protection around him. So Satan tried Job, therefore he knew about the edge. The devil has been trying to get to your household. I want to tell you that. Uh, and some of us, or, or you know, most of us, don't even realize the many assignments that the enemy has already commenced on us, but the edge of protection. We have a shield around us, and the prayers of your past are preserving you in your present and into your future. And so you must know that you have an edge of protection. I'm going to uh, tell you today that you have... And this is what we need to pray. Pray for shields of favor. <laughs> say that with me. A shield of favor. Now, what is favor? Let me first say this. That favor is like a fragrance. You can't see it on your skin, but you can smell it on a person that enters into the room. So if you have a God kind of favor on you, you have a God kind of fragrance, a God kind of smell on you. It's, it's somewhat like the sun behind the clouds. You may not be able to see the sun, but you could feel its warmth. You may not be able to realize this edge of protection that is around you or this shield of favor that is around you, but I want you to know that you have a shield of favor around you. Favor. Mm. Favor is what causes others to come into agreement with you. Favor marks your place at the table when people extend courtesies to you without you even requesting it. Uh, favor. Somebody shout, I'm triggering favor this morning. I came to do that and... Um, Put a shield of favor. I pray this year that you are going to have a shield of favor. Let me just say this. I was, we were pondering on this. There's so much going on inside of this pandemic. There's so much of threats and there's so many things that are falling. Even in the economy, there are some things that are dying and it will never resurrect. If you are inside of this pandemic, I want you to refocus. I know that all of us, our minds are set on this pandemic and all we, we're thinking about is how do we overcome this? But let's fast forward and say we have survived. What's going to happen post-COVID? Do you have a battle plan? Do you have a battle axe in your hand? I, I think there are so many opportunities. There are opportunities for online teaching. Uh, and, if, and if you're a teacher, you should start to think uh, uh, out of the box and, 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 and start to think about how you can, you can start to tutor from a distance. There's, 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 there's so many opportunities inside of these threats. And I want to say to you, let's, let's think post-COVID. We, we are too consumed inside of COVID, but after COVID has, has gone, it's going to lift. Every storm must pass. Uh, you can't have 365 days of rain. The sun will shine again. And I'm talking to you and I want to fast forward you because you need to have the shield of favor. As I said last week, uh, Jabez prayed, oh Lord, that you would enlarge my territory. I know you are inside of a challenge, but what about the enlargement of your territory post the challenge? And uh, it's a Good time to start to think uh, about opportunities and start to get out their businesses. Uh, you should start to, 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 to reroute. That's the word. To reroute uh, where you are going. Uh, I think it's Exodus 13. God has just dropped this in my spirit. Uh, God was going to take the Israelites out from slavery. He was going to take them into the promised land. And uh, in order to get into Canaan, he had to pass through Philistine property. When God brought them out, 
he realized that these people are not going to make it if they go through Philistine territory. Because in the one day that he's brought them out, they still had a slave mindset. And uh, uh, the Philistines were already uh, in a great in military and, and, and in military strategy. And if he took them through the Philistine territory, those were soldiers. Uh, and soldiers could so easily defeat the slaves. So the Bible says, and I wish you could go and read it, God took them into a longer, he rerouted them, he changed his mind about this. Uh, uh, imagine God having to change his mind because they couldn't change their mindset. Mm -hmm. You, in order for you to go into the promises, sometimes you need a change of your mind. They were too, they had too much of a slave mentality and these people had too much of a military strategy. So slaves had to become soldiers overnight in order to pass through that land. If they could not, then God had to take them through a longer journey. Oh, was the journey going to be long? Yes. But I think also the advantage of taking longer to be in a place of promise is that the longer it takes to get in, the longer you will stay inside of it. Oh God, I'm preaching good this morning. Uh, because if they went into the promises and if there was a small challenge they would return so the longer it took them to get into the place the longer they could stay inside of that place my god so was there going to be challenge in the longer route of course uh, the biggest challenge and obstacle was going to be the red sea but sometimes the thing that you are walking on could be the very thing that could drown somebody that tries to walk over it to attack you. And so God is going to protect you. And hence I say again, if God be for you, nothing can be against you. The Red Sea may be an opposition, but God will put a window or a door in a wall, as he did with Jericho wall. The Jericho wall was an obstruction, but God took that out. I rise to tell you, if it's a God exit, God will create entry points for you. Walk. And so this morning, I, I, I want to say that in order to be in a post-COVID a situation where you are going to enlarge your territory, you need a mind shift. Family of God, listen to me, listen to me. Inside of your isolation, don't waste the time. Every young person, lean in this morning. Uh, if you are uh, in, in, in the ages of 25 to, to 40, you are in a great space right now. There are opportunities opportunities that you can consider wisely because you can take risks you can afford to take those risks and I want you to start to think don't waste your time don't go insane in your membrane uh, start to have a think tank on the inside of you and start to start to think post-COVID uh, have a mind uh, have a shift in your mind uh, so that uh, your prayer of Jabez Oh God, that you would enlarge my territory. I don't know, I didn't even come uh, prepared to speak about this, but I want you to pray large, pray large, and God is going to bless you. I rise as your pastor in this week of the fast to say, though the enemy will come against us like a flood, God is going to raise a standard against the enemy. And so if God be for you, nothing can be against you. I want to progress this morning. Uh, Why don't you just use the case study of Daniel and then we are going to pray over our prayer bowl moment. In Daniel chapter 3, uh, Daniel is, has two Jewish companions who refused to bow to the king's molten image. They were thrown into a fire. I think that fire is what you was used to make the molten image. Uh, so 
they made the fire seven times greater. I want you to understand that they made the molten image and these boys refused to bow to that molten image. The fire is seven times greater. I'm trying to show you that our God is going to be seven times greater as well. And you know what happened? There was not even a smell of smoke on those boys. Why? Because they had a shield of favor around them. That's the shield I'm praying for you in this week. This morning, I also want to say, in I think it's Daniel chapter 6, where the boys, or Daniel is thrown into a lion's den. And Daniel is protected. Uh, by a shield of lion repellent. Uh, I like to say that he, he has a, a lion repellent uh, or, or, or and, and, and nothing that the, the lions uh, just uh, they just keep their mouth shut. So uh, the favor of shield became a fireproof shield and uh, there was a lion repellent. God's purpose for them was greater than the enemy's plans against them. Let me say that again. God's purpose for your life is far greater than the enemy's plans for your life. And so in this week and in this month and this year, I want you to push forward, advance. Uh, retreat is not an option. We are going to push forward. All right. Now, uh, I wanna, we're going to pray in the prayer bowl and uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to save your data, but get as much back into you. You know, in Mark chapter 11, verse 25, the Bible says, when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your father in heaven will forgive your sins. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that forgiveness is pivotal to having your life being a success. And so as we enter into this year, I want you to let go of some of the things that you've been holding on to. When a snake bites you, you don't die of the bite of the snake. When the mouth of the snake has left you, the poison of the snake is still inside of you. You don't die out of the snake bite. You die of the poison that's on the inside of you. This morning, I came to tell you, let it go. Let go of all of your grudges. Let go of all the unforgiveness and walk. Let the poison, when even though they mouth left you 10 years ago the poison is still inside of you and it's hindering your walk with God let it go I said let it go and so we are going to pray because the Bible says when you stand praying if you hold anything the first thing we are going to do is let it go now this morning there's a prayer bowl and you've sent in your requests we are going to pray over your requests and then work this thing through so that you're going to have God's shield of favor let's pray father I rise on the clause this morning where you said the prayers of the saints will arise to you. This morning, I thank you for this bowl. I thank you for the prayers that have been inserted. As we've done in the past, we do in the present so that we'll still receive your blessings in the future. Let every prayer arise as a sweet smelling savor. Let angels bring these prayers before you and God hear from the heavens. Answer our prayer and send down an answer to every request. I thank Thank you in Jesus' name. I thank you. I worship you. I adore you. We've seen, oh God, answers to our prayers. If it's healing, heal them. If it's provision, provide for them. If it's not deliverance, I pray deliverance over them. Whatever it is, I thank you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, 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 amen. I've tried to contain all of this in just a short space of time, but it is carrying a weight, and I do believe I feel the anointing on it, and the anointing will destroy the yoke of bondage. It's been a joy being with you. Let me pronounce God's benediction over you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Lift up his countenance towards you. And God give you peace. Peace by the true definition of peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's been a joy and a delight to break bread with you.
and to feed you. And I trust that you are going to live victoriously, not only in this week, not only in this month, but in the year and the years that lie ahead. I come against the spirit of infection and inflammation and all of those things that are uh, around us. I pray that you will have a good mind, sound mind. The spirit of God will be upon you. I am Vernon Jacob, senior pastor of the Embassy Church. I'll see you on the other side of this virus. Bye.